In this CBT Techniques video, we're going to be covering the technique of making definitions clear and fair. Now, a big problem with clients coming in, especially people coming in with depression, is that the, the definitions they're using, the labels they're putting on themselves, is really unfair. In a way that it's unique here, it's that they're, they're being extremely vague and they're overgeneralizing to such a huge extent that it, it just compounds the weight that they're carrying. And so with this technique, what your goal is as the therapist is to try and get as specific as you can with the definitions that your client has in how they're sizing up their life, the labels and the, and the critical judgments they have on them. And the hope here is that you're going to open up a different way of looking at themselves, a way that is more fair, a way that has more color, more variation, that, that gives the client the, the self-support that they need in order to carry on and feel better about what's going on. And that self-support is, is going to be is going to be based on on the fact that there's more to them than just being an idiot, a failure, a jerk. That they have other uh, qualities, they have other characteristics that are actually really positive. And that so ultimately, what's bad is not as bad as they think. And you're making room for the good that they're completely ignoring. So in using this technique, you're going to want to have already laid down the groundwork in defining the terms that you're dealing with. And I have a previous video that describes that technique. So pushing forward, now that you have a clear definition, you know, say as for example, a failure, a failure is someone who is unable to accomplish their goals. Okay, fine. This next step here is to, is to help the client see that maybe they're overgeneralizing that definition on them, or that definition is too vague, not in the sense that the definition itself is vague, but the application on the client himself is too vague and too broad. So what, what you want to be asking is, well, you know, the different, the different situations clients, your client is coming in with, um, they just had a breakup with their, with their girlfriend and they're a failure. Well, what about that makes them a failure? You know, we have this definition, a failure is someone who's not able to accomplish things in their life. Well, how exactly is this a failure? How does this make you a failure as opposed to a relationship didn't work out? There were, there were differences you guys had in the relationship. The fighting was pretty hard for both of you. Those are a lot different than being a failure. Because the idea here is you're trying to create, uh, create, create a definition that's so clear that any third party would be able to know exactly what's going on without you having to prompt them. So a third party would be able to see, okay, well, this relationship does have its problems. There is a lot of fighting. The fighting's going on every day. There's a lot of arguing and disagreement. A third party can see that and they can describe it in detail, but it's, it's harder for anybody to really get on board and say, well, this is a failure of a relationship because there's a lot of good qualities also that make the couple a great couple. Or maybe they're not a great couple, but these are two really good people that it wouldn't be fair to say that either one's a failure, just they don't, they don't for sure get along. You know, that 100% we can all agree on. Homework that can help your client develop the skill of being less vague and more precise in their definitions is setting up a three column piece of paper. And in one column, what you want to do is you want to collect all the vague terms, the negative terms that the client is putting on themselves. And then in the second column, you're going to want to have your client define as accurately as they can what that definition means. And the third column, and this is going to be the crux of the exercise, is, well, how would other people know, you know, given the topic, given the event, well, how would they know that this definition applies to that event? Is it too vague? Is it too idiosyncratic for other people to be able to, to, to notice the same way that the client is? And in that way, using this third party, these outside observers, uh, you're really triangulating the truth here that, that it, it, in all likelihood, these, these terms are too vague. Failure, loser, jerk. 
and that other people aren't going to be able to apply those words to the events that the client is in their life. And so you're giving an opportunity to allow your client to see their life through other people's eyes. But again, the benchmark is that it has to have that clarity that everyone can be on the same page without belaboring the point. Another, another idea that would be worthwhile sneaking in here is that ideas are tools, thoughts are tools, and if we're not able to have the same definitions, if our definitions aren't clear enough that other people would be easily able to share those and observe the same thing, well, the tool isn't working properly. It's not doing what it's designed to do, is creating clear thought that can be conveyed to other people. Possible problems that can come up with this technique is the fact that these definitions are so idiosyncratic, they're so personal to your client, it's going to be really hard for them to give these terms up. For whatever reason, they're connecting with those terms and they're working really well in as far as how the client understands himself, even though they're too vague and causing a lot of pain. A another problem with this particular technique is that clients can confuse what feelings are with thoughts and that they become so overwhelmed with their feelings, the sense of hopelessness, the sense of, of failure, that it will just be too difficult to, to buckle down and write out a definition that's, that's clear and accurate. They'll be too emotionally overwhelmed. So it'll be your job as a therapist to try and, and use metaphors, use Socratic questioning to as far as the first problem goes, to get your client on board with how it's not useful, such highly personalized language. And as far as the second problem, using stabilizing techniques, use some mindfulness, use some calming techniques to get your client back in, back in his, his more analytic mind that he can do this exercise. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like or share it with your friends. If you want to send me a comment, you can do so on the comment box or check out my website and shoot me an email. And you can also support my work on Patreon. I'll see you in the next video.